blessed way. Almighty God, Lord, as we come before you tonight, oh God, Lord, we praise you and lift you up, oh God, we just ask you tonight, oh God, Lord, stir the heart, Lord, of your brother, oh God, as he breaks the bread of life, Lord, just give us, Lord, what we need tonight, oh God, just help us, oh God, to hear, Lord, what the Spirit saith to the church, oh God, just help us, oh Lord, to be obedient to your voice, oh Lord, and just have your way, Lord, in our lives today, oh God, we pray, Lord, just save our lost and heal the sick, oh God, and draw us closer to you, Lord, just let your will be done. We ask it all, Lord, in your precious name of Jesus Christ, a name above every name, the name of God. For we thank and praise you, God. Brother Jeremy. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Brother Johnny said something this morning that stirred me up. I think well, that's probably for next Sunday, but end up it's for tonight. You know, listening throughout the service. You know, the Bible says, listen what the Spirit say unto the church. Amen. So I was listening. I had something on my mind. But, you know, you never know if it's going to change or stay the same, Brother Johnny, until yeah. you get up and get going. But I want to talk about detoxing this morning, tonight. You know, you get sick or something, doctors, a lot of times they'll recommend a detox where you don't eat and you drink water. Mm -hmm. And that water will flush out your system. And get the things out of your system, the toxins out that don't belong. Mm. And you know, a lot of times I thought, you know, we all got here probably by driving. It took gas to get here. You know, we need gas as Christians. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And you know, the two sisters, two of the sisters said stuff that was pretty much right down the line with this. And I'd ask Sister Lynn if I could, you know, use what she testified about before she ever said it. And you know. You might get here and be going good, but if you put a little bit of sugar in your tank, your engine starts to get a little bit sluggish. Yeah. And before long, you've got to get in that carburetor, Brother Johnny, and then stop it up. Yeah. And you know, I thought a lot of times we can have things in our life Amen. that cause us to get sluggish. Yeah. And I was sitting back here thinking, and God spoke to me about the flesh being weak or the flesh being too strong. He had talked about Jesus saying certain things was only come out by prayer and by fasting. Yeah. And you know, they said Brother Taylor used to say that fasting would put prayer on your, um, put wings on your prayers. Mm -hmm. And you know, it gets a hold of God. And you know, you think about that, you abstain from food, you're abstaining from putting bad things in. Because yeah. probably none of us really maybe eat healthy like we should. Maybe some of you do. You know, and if you look at one of them, I think they call them vegans. It's like I seen one one time, they's like 70 years old. And they looked a lot, a lot younger than me because they only put healthy things in their body. Well, you know, you think about us as Christians. What if we dedicated ourselves to prayer and to fasting? Mm -hmm. And, you know, fasting is more than food. It's more than water, Brother John. Yeah. It's abstaining from things of the world, too. Amen. You know, Sister Linda had said something about, you know, God had showed her about her TV. And she felt like until she got rid of it, you know, she started to feel a little sluggish, wasn't she? You know, there can be things in our life and God show us and we start to get a little sluggish. You know, we start to get wore down. Like Sister Lisa said, we lose our joy. We need our joy. Amen. Because the joy of the Lord For sure. is our strength. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if we're all honest, and we, we're all supposed to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So we should all be honest. Sometimes we all get sluggish. How many of you get an attitude sometimes? Mm -hmm. I thought what Brother Chris said about the boy that was homeless didn't have no shirt. You know, you used to sometimes, years ago, there was a woman in Ireton. Uh, you probably all remember, she used to walk around going like this. Well, I had a big problem back then about people that didn't work. I'd scream at her to get a job. And one night we was riding through in a, my buddy Suzuki Samurai, and I threw a bunch of pennies out the road in front of a car. Well, she ran out in front of that car to get them pennies. And I screamed, get a job, you bum. And you know, you think about that, about the attitude that somebody's got. And you see people panhandling out for money and stuff. And you know, if you're not careful, the first attitude could be to judge that person and think, you know, why don't they do this or why don't they do that? But you know, the first attitude, it gives somebody the benefit of the doubt, Brother Johnny, think maybe they really are hungry. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe I could be God's hands and feet and give them something to eat. But not to show condemnation. You know, Brother Chris tried to help them to make sure that they were safe. That should be our first response. Not to put people down, not to belittle people or downgrade people. Sometimes there's pride and things in our life that we need to get out. The things that's in there that will cause us to be sluggish. Amen. To cause us to lose our joy. Yes. And you know, we need a detox. The Bible says we get cleansed by the washing of the water of the yeah. word. Sometimes we need to sit back and we need to pray and we need to fast and ask God to show us things in our life that don't belong. Yeah. How many of you got things that you're working on? Mm -hmm. Got something in there that you feel like just don't belong, just yeah. don't measure up? Prayer and fasting. It wasn't just casting out devils, yeah, Brother right. Johnny. Yeah. That's, you know, there's a whole lot of things to this. You know, living in this world, we need prayer and fasting. Jesus said, can't you just pray with me one hour? Yeah. He said, the Spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. You think about it. When we're weak, God says we're strong. Yeah. You know, when our flesh is weak, I've come to church, plumb wore out, and start praying, and God revitalized me and give me strength, Brother Johnny, where I can enjoy yeah. the church service. Amen. You know, God can do all things yeah. if we'll put our faith and our trust in Him. Amen. If you could turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Perfect. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. You just got to try to decipher without my teeth. They kind of slur a little bit. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. You know, Brother Dallas had mentioned about how a lot of people look at that too in the field, want to be taken, the other be led. As they look at two people out farming. But like he said, that's there's two of us. Amen. Like a quarter, you got one quarter, but you got heads and you got tails. It says, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. You think about the flesh, you know, this skin is considered flesh. Mm -hmm. But you think about the desires of the flesh. What desires in your body, your mind? You can either have a carnal mind mm -hmm. or you can have a spiritual mind. Yeah. The flesh can either be spiritual or it can be carnal. I can have a carnal mind or I can have a spiritual mind. I come to church, want to come to church tonight, and I want to be a help and I want to learn. Amen. So it's probably not going to do me no good to go home as soon as I get in, get me some chicken wings, ain't nothing wrong with eating chicken wings, and watch two football games before I come to church. Because my mind's not going to be on the Lord. It's going to be on the world. I'm going to be back here sitting there thinking, who threw a touchdown pass and what a good run that was. My mind's not going to be on the Lord. We do things to cause ourselves trouble. Like you can eat a turkey. And turkey, I think it's called l tryptophan. Wouldn't be a, got, tur got l tryptophan in it. That's not a good thing to eat before you come to church because l tryptophan makes you sleepy. You're going to eat a big turkey dinner before you come to church. You're not going to get much out of it, Brother Johnny, because you're going to be sleepy mm -hmm. and tired. We need to do things that purify the spiritual part of our mind. We make the flesh stronger, Sister Darlene, by killing the natural part of it. We need to fast and we need to pray more than we ever have before in our life. It says, and of the mind, and we're by the nature of children of wrath, even of others. In Galatians, I'll read this one, says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another, to other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Mm -hmm. You know, Brother Johnny's mentioned about the cell phones. I've got a cell phone. <coughs> And, you know, every now and then I'd try to play a game, but I've noticed before long it would take me over, Sister Darlene, and I couldn't do it. So I don't, I don't play them no more because I couldn't regulate myself. I would want to play them all the time. And, you know, things like that will take us out of God's work. It'll take us out of prayer. You know, what do we need more 
to play a little game on the phone or we need a closer walk with God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I don't know what you guys are going through. I don't know what trials you guys are going through. But I'll tell you what, the things we went through in the last few years, I can't imagine them being any worse. So I know that I need to put a lot of the worldly things aside. And I need to spend more time, Brother Johnny, devoted unto God. I need to put more fuel in this gas tank and stop letting the sugars of this world Amen. sweeten up the tank Amen. and put stuff inside it that don't belong in there. You know, I tell you what, if you don't watch out, you can let hurt feelings or malice or anger, let those things creep in. Brother Johnny yeah. taught a lesson one time about the root of bitterness. It just starts out as a seed. But I tell you what, if you don't choke it out, if you don't get it out of there, it's going to grow and it's going to grow. And before long, it's going to be a mighty tree in your yeah. life. And Amen. it's going to take you out. God's Amen. people can't have bitterness in them. No. They can't let anger take a hold of them. Amen. They can't let the lust of the flesh take over. Yeah. You know, before long, Brother Johnny, when I was when I was a kid, I always wanted mom to buy me. And I think we wore guest jeans and polo. That meant something to me back then. But you know now, as long as I've got something to read, I've got a Bible to read, and I've got a rope over my head, Sister Darlene, and i got food, I'm happy. I don't have to have main bread clothes. Most of my stuff, it comes from Goodwill, Brother Johnny. Yeah. I don't care if somebody else has broken in and made it comfortable Amen. for me. You know, but I would work. To, I lived to work instead of working to live. You know, we want so many things in this world, but I tell you what, Brother Johnny said, if there's nothing greater than Jesus Christ, Amen. we should desire more and more of Jesus Amen. Christ Amen. and less and less of this world. Yeah. You know, I, I applaud Sister Linda. You know, that God shows you something to give up. That's great. The Bible says an eye of fitness to pluck it out, and that's not talking about our natural eye. But you know, you think, how could something get inside of me that could cause me trouble? Mm -hmm. You got four things that's in, that's on your body that something that could enter into you and cause you trouble. You got two eyes and two ears. What you hear and what you see. And like she had said, most of the stuff on TV is, is nasty stuff and foul language. And I mean, God's people got no business. You sit around and listen to foul language all the time. For long, you're going to slip and say it. Because you've let it come in mm -hmm. your heart. You've let it come in your mind. You know, you sit and watch stuff with women in bathing suits or men running around. You know, they don't ever show chubby men on TV. They always show them guys with golden brown skin and rippled bellies. They don't ever show guys with pot bellies like me. You know why? Because they want to get you with the lust of the flesh. And I tell you what, you start seeing that stuff, then you're going down the road, you start thinking about that stuff, Sister Sally. You start thinking about that guy with that golden brown skin. But I tell you, if you don't watch it, it can't enter in. If you don't listen to things, I don't listen to people preaching false messages. So their message can't deceive me. I don't want to hear them sing. I don't want to hear them preach because they're not preaching the truth. Amen. I want to hear the truth. Amen. I love their soul. Yeah. I'll be good to them. But I don't want to hear messages preaching no. about three gods. I don't want to hear stuff that's false. Amen. You know, Sister Sally had mentioned about, it's funny she mentioned that. I was, I like, if I watch something, I like to watch something I can learn from. And I was watching about how the Reformation and stuff, and how the Amish, they had come out of the Anabaptists. And how the, before, what they come out of, they come out of the Catholic Church. The Amish, or the Anabaptists did, that's Reformation, and then they went in to the Amish. And the Amish and the Catholic Church both control people by fear. We need to be controlled by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And by the love for God. Like in the Amish, they'll discommunicate you. We had a friend, they put him among, you know, he was exiled from the family, the church, everything because he wanted a Silverado and he wanted to run dogs. Fear. You know, a lot of people back early days in the churches, in the Catholic Church, they drown people. If they do things wrong and come against the doctrine, you get hanged, you get burned at the stake, they drown you by fear. But we need to be controlled by a love for God and Amen. being led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. If we're not led by God's Spirit, whose Spirit's leading us? Mm, right. Our Spirit. What we want. You know why? Because we feed that spirit. The old, the old Indian proverb, I guess, that the young brave asked the chief, said, said, you know, he told him, he said, there's a battle going on inside of two wolves. And he said, 
Who's the strongest? And the chief said, who do you feed? Mm -hmm. And you think about that. Whoever's strongest, you know, Sister Gail, she's down with the next surgery right now. If you put her up here and Brother Anthony, Brother Anthony could probably pour all over the church because he's stronger than her right now. We want God to move when we come to church. But how much do we pray before we come to church? Amen. How often do we fast, Brother Johnny? But we expect God to do everything while we do very little. Mm -hmm. And we expect a great mm -hmm. move of God. Yep. It's not going to work that way. Nope. You know, you'd say, the Bible says, if a man don't work, he ought not eat. Well, man's figured out a way around that. People yep. go to work nowadays, and they won't work, but they still get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to church, and we're going to genuinely get something from God. We've got to desire it. We've got to hunger it. We've got to want it more than the world. Say, well, I feel what I'm sitting here thinking about one time. What's going to be on Seinfeld tonight? Wonder why we didn't get the Holy Ghost that night. Wonder why we didn't get our deliverance that night. Because our heart, we've laid out the treasure on that old TV box. And I, I'm not saying, you know, like Sister Linda, God can fix you up and get rid of it. But like I said, I like to learn stuff. Usually if I watch something, I'm learning something. But if something's causing us trouble in our life, we need to get rid of it. Amen. Because it's going to cause us to grow, grow, yeah. groggy yes. and wear down. It says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. That's what we need to do, is we need to be led of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody messaged me today and said that somebody was telling them they didn't have to have the Holy Ghost. Said, you know, are you saying that, ask me pretty much if people would go to hell if they didn't have the Holy Ghost. I said, God puts people in or out. I said, but the Bible tells me that you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Yeah. I said, there's two key words there, must and and. As for me, to get home and to deal with what I deal with from day to day, I need the Holy Ghost every day, not just Amen. to make it to heaven. I need it to make it from Monday to Tuesday, Brother yeah. Johnny. Amen. Because it's the Holy Ghost that's keeping me. Mm. But it's not only the Holy Ghost, it's my desire to be kept. Yeah. We have to want to be that's kept. Right. Yeah. And as long as we want to be kept, God will keep us. Yeah. But if we don't want to be kept, you know, God's a gentleman. He's not going to hold us hostage. Yeah. He's not going to hold us prisoner. Yeah. You know, I can't, you know, I'll be honest. I can't expect to, I can't expect to lose weight while I lay around in bed all the time drinking Mountain Dew. It ain't going to happen. And I tell you what, we can't expect to get filled with the Holy Ghost and stay filled with the Holy Ghost if all we do is worldly things, Brother Johnny. Amen. You know, I know Amen. we're in the world, and you know, there's things that goes on. But we don't have to be led by the flesh. We need to be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many of you need to fast for? Yeah. I'll raise both hands. I need to fast for and is it easy? No, it ain't easy. But I tell you what, when you fast, replace it with that water. Replace it with the word. You yeah, don't know who got to fast and go to Hamden Park and please the flesh. Right. You know, if you read about a biblical flesh, when they did it, they did it, they were serving God. Mm -hmm. You want the toxins of the sin to come out of the body? Replace it with the word of God, brother gentlemen. Yeah. Fast, abstain from the world. Say, well, I tell you what, I'm going to fast today. I'm not going to eat no Hershey's or drink no pop. But I'm going to say, watch the 24-hour Andy Griffith Marathon. Well, you're defeating, defeating the purpose. It's to, to press down the flesh, to strengthen the spirit. You're not going to strengthen the spirit watching TV 24 hours, Brother Johnny. That's exactly right. Amen. You, we need to pray and fast <laughs> and seek God. <clears throat> Go visit people. Call people. When we're fasting, do something for God. God said that was the fast that he had chosen was to break the bonds. People were struggling. Like Sister Lisa said that something was just, it was just dragging her down, making her sad. People, we need one another. Amen. I need you. You know, Sister Lisa needed somebody to make her smile, to lift her up, to help her, to pray Amen. for her. We need one another. Amen. But I tell you what, as long as we're so influenced by what's going on in the world, we're not going to get nowhere with God. You know, 
Brother Chris, make the world up. Treats my kids special, does stuff for him. I said something for him. He talks about when he's with Brother Chris. Brother Chris, same person, no matter where he's at. Actually, he's a, I don't know if he dances at work or not, but you know, he's the exact same person when he's out. He, he don't change. He don't change. My son needs a lot of prayer. Brother Chris has taken time out of his life to spend with my kid, to help my kid, to show my kid somebody in the church cares about my kid. I tell you what, we need to work for God, Amen. And more for God. Amen. We're at God's arms and feet. Mm -hmm. if, God, if we're not moving, how's God going to move if we're not moving? Amen. But I tell you what, if we're not careful, the things of this world can choke out that seed of the Word of God in us, and we'll lose our strength, we'll lose our joy. 1 Peter 2 and 11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from the fleshly lust which war against the soul. I tell you what, how many times you go to read your Bible or get down and pray, something else fleshly comes to your mind. To try to get your mind away from it. God said to abstain from it. Oh, devil's trying to trick you into giving up that word, to giving up that prayer time. Now, how many of you ladies would like if your husband never, never communicated with you? I've learned, I've heard men make fun of women all my life and say, if a man could ever write a book about women, that he'd be rich. Women ain't hard to figure out if you spend time with them. All my wife wants is for me to talk to her. That's it. I don't have to buy her no diamonds. I don't have to buy her no jewels, Brother Johnny. She just wants me to talk to her and listen to her. Amen. And make her feel special. Because nobody's ever done that for her before. That's all she requires. Women aren't that hard to figure out. If we'll just listen, if we care. Said abstain from the fleshly. Abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, and say that they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lust. Now you say, when Jesus came down here, it wasn't just his skin that was nailed to that cross. They nailed a perfect mind to that cross. Mm -hmm. When Christ came down here, his mind overcame. It overcame. He didn't lust after women. He didn't covet after his neighbor's donkey. He didn't do any of that. He lived a perfect life. And he set a perfect example for us. He told him without prayer and fasting. I don't know. I'm not going to say we can, but I don't know if we'll make it to heaven without fasting, Brother Johnny. You know, you think a big cost, if, if it takes fasting to give it, to put out a devil. You think about that. If we never put our flesh under subjection, how are we going to have enough power with God to do anything? We've got to fast. We've got to pray. You know, Brother Johnny was talking about the power of faith. You know, it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you know, you're going to, somebody mentioned tribulations, is you're going to go through tribulations to get faith too. You think before before David fought Goliath, he fought a lion and he fought a bear. David knew that God would be there for him. First, we've got to know the scripture. Yeah. Then we've got to have faith in the scripture. When David went before Goliath, he said, you uncircumcised Philistine. Mm -hmm. said, you come to me with a sword and a shield. I come to you in the name of the Lord. First, we've got to know the word. Then we've got to have faith in the word. Yeah. Amen. What about it, David? You know, David didn't know the scriptures. David didn't know. David didn't spend time talking to God. He says he was a man after God's own heart because he trusted God. And that's what we need to do is we need to trust God more and more and more and seek God more and more and more. And, more. and don't go away and say, Brother Jeremy said, I'm going to hell if I don't fast. That's God's job to put people in heaven or hell. But I'm telling you that I need to fast more because my flesh... Sometimes it's stronger than what I want it to be, Brother John. And I'm not pleased when it's like that. 
I'm not pleased when I make a mistake. You know, when I, when I do wrong, you'll usually find me in my bed and I don't want to be talked to. I don't want to be bothered. I'm laying in there remorseful. I don't laugh and crack a smile after I mess up. If I mess up, I'm in there telling God I'm sorry and figuring out a way that I can fix it and put my faith and trust in God more and not do it anymore. It says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 17 through 21, it says, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, how many of us want to be justified by Christ? You know, I heard a good explanation for justified one day. It's justified never. You're justified never sinned. Justified never done wrong. We want to be justified in Christ. We ourselves found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Mm -hmm. you know, who are we going to blame? Everybody says the devil made me do it. Mm -hmm. This is... For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Yeah. Amen. I'll tell you what. Aye. When my wife met me, my dad said I better marry her because she'd come over. She pretty much stayed with us. And on Friday night, I watched Friday night fights from start to close. On Saturday, I turned on and I watched college football all the way three games. On Sunday, I watched three games. On Monday night, I watched Monday Night Football for it. It consumed me. And anything I can watch, Brother Johnny, girl, I can't do that now. Yeah, every now and then I watch a basketball game. I can't be consumed by things anymore. Yeah. Amen. And I know that temptation is there, but I don't allow it. Because I want to get closer to God, Sister Darlene. I don't want to go back. I don't want to be the person I used to be. I don't want to sit in front of the TV and scream and shout and do something and then come to church and be full of dead man's bones, Brother Johnny. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to get somewhere with God. And I tell you what, we're going to have to do it by prayer and by fasting. And the more we pray and the more we fast, the more power we're going to have with God because we're going to have more faith. God will deliver us if we'll let him. Mm -hmm. We gotta want it. We gotta want it. Like I said, I've asked and asked and asked for this trial for more <clears throat> For God to remove it, Brother Johnny. I begged, I pleaded. But you know, I find stuff through this thing we're going through. I keep finding things in my life that don't belong. But it, you know, a lot of times we pray, Lord, I want a closer walk. Then I'll tell you what, we're the first ones to bellyache when the storm comes. Yeah. I'll tell you what, a storm's going to come, or a closer walk's going to come. It's going to come through the storm. We're going to go through trials, yeah. and we're going to go through tribulation. But I'll tell you what, that's when it's up to us to have power with God, yeah. to be read up and fast up and ready to go up. But I tell you what, if we've been sitting around and never do anything for God, we never read the Word, or we never fast, I tell you what, we're going to be overtaken when the trials come. When the storms come, we're not going to make it because we're weighted down with the things of the world. Yeah. The Bible said, let us lay aside every weight that doeth easily beset us. You know, the things that are causing us to struggle. Sister Linda, God showed her it was a TV. She put it out of her life. Whatever it is, we need to put it out of our life. Yeah. Then we got to be careful not to pick it back up. Amen. Because then if we do, then it becomes sin. Yeah. You know, we need, we need God. We need God. And you know why God called us? Because God needs us. Mm -hmm. Because we're his mouth. We're his hands. We're his feet. You know, God preached, taught a wonderful lesson this morning. He taught through Brother Johnny. You know, when Brother Johnny, God put it on Brother Johnny and Sister Rini's heart to go out there and pray with that man, God healed somebody. Why? Through so Brother Johnny evidently stays busy enough praying and fasting that God's going to give him something to do. You know, you say, well, I want God to use me. Well, I'll tell you what, if we get in God's Word, Brother Johnny, and we pray, God will use us. <coughs> but if we're too occupied with doing the things of the world, you know, I don't know what God's thinking. Maybe he's thinking, well, how can I send you to work? All you're doing is sitting and doing this or doing that. You're not, you're not, you're more entertained with the things of the world than you are with my word. 
You're too busy talking on the phone gossiping than you are praying and talking to me, having a relationship with me. We need a relationship Amen. with God. For you. And that, that's communication. It says, For I know the law and dead to the law that I might live unto God. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yes. And the life which now I live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You know, I am crucified with Christ. How can I be crucified with Christ? Because I can crucify the lust of this flesh. Mm -hmm. Just like he came down here, Brother Johnny, and he was victorious over death, yeah. hell, and the grave. Amen. You think the devil didn't sin? You know, they don't say, but you don't think the devil sent women to flirt with Jesus? Mm -hmm. He overcame. They beat him, they yeah. smite him, they spit on him. He overcame. He overcame. There was a woman caught there in the act of adultery. He wasn't mean to her. He showed her love. There was another woman in there that was a prostitute. He didn't, he didn't say, you get away from me. He loved her. You know why? Because he walked in the Spirit. He walked in the Spirit. You know, if you're honest, the worst days you ever have, the days that you fail most, the days that I fail most, is the day that I fail to start my day with prayer. When I start, you know, like Brother Dallas said, when you've not done everything, you've got your mind all tied up, you get up early and start your morning with God, you've got a clear mind. Like Daniel, he prayed 21 days. You know, sometimes we come to church, if we've not been praying and seeking God and reading our Bible before we come, sometimes it takes, we'll be at church two hours. Did it take God two hours to move or just take us two hours to get through the place to move God? I mean, it's, I question myself. You know, like Brother Don, he sat over there crying one day. And he said, I just wonder if there's something in me, the reason people aren't getting the Holy Ghost. Oh, man. As good as a man he is, he's questioning himself to see if there's something in him on the end the service. I tell you what, that makes me want to question myself even more. Brother Bill said he was still growing. I tell you what, if he was still growing, I got a whole lot more growing to do, Brother Johnny. Amen. Because they're searching themselves. They're trying to see. How many of you have asked yourself, is there something in me, reason somebody ain't getting the Holy Ghost? Am I hindering the service? The Bible says not to quench the Spirit. Do we quench the Spirit? Do we set on our testimony? Or do we come in here ready to work for God? Yeah, you know, I tell you what, when the time clock hit, we spoke to Clunch in a 5Q. I was usually punched in, had my radio, and ready to go to work because I was ready to do my job. And I tell you what, if I didn't have six kids, I'd be here way early. But I tell you what, they're hard enough to pertain. You know, at the house, you get them in here. <coughs> you know, God, the, the fields are white and ready for harvest. But the workers are few. Yeah. We've got to put God first in our life. Amen. I've got to put God first in my life more than what I do right now. You know, I see that. I see now God God showed me that the days that I struggle the most with the things that are going on is the days that I get down about not being able to do anything. And then I lay around in the bed and I soak, Brother Johnny. I need to pray more and I need to fast and I know God can deliver me. Like I said, I know I can kneel down at the altar now and that's a big thing for me because it really bothered me that I couldn't kneel down. So yeah, I had an excuse, but I didn't want that excuse. I didn't want that reason, Brother Johnny. I wanted to overcome that reason. I didn't like sitting back watching people pray. I wanted to get down there with them and God's helped me with that. And I know if I can keep the right state of mind and seek God, I know God can do more for me with this. But I gotta want it. God don't give things against our will, Brother Johnny. Right. It's got to be what we want. He said He'd give us our heart's desire. Amen. But I tell you what, we want a closer walk with God. And we're gonna sit around and watch TV 10 hours a day and read the newspaper two hours a day and play games. We ain't never gonna get nowhere with God playing Amen. games. We need to be seeking God. Say, well, brother, I tell you what, you're wrong. I got the Holy Ghost. I tell you what, if you're thinking that, you need more of it. We need all need more of it. I need more of it, Brother Kevin. 
I'm blessed and full of the Holy Ghost. I tell you what, I'd be like Peter. People are just waiting to get in Peter's shadow so they can get their healing. I tell you what, that don't happen with me. Any of you all ever get healed in your shadow? Somebody get healed in your shadow? I tell you what, I need more. Amen. And there's more for me if I want it. Yeah. But God can't put something in there if there's other things taking up the room, Brother Johnny. Come on, brother. I got to empty it out so God can fill it up, Sister yeah. Eve. If I'm filling it up with things of the world, God can't fill it up with things of the Spirit because bitter and sweet water can't dwell together. Right. They're not going to mix. No. We've got to want it. Amen. You know, I'll tell you what I've done. I don't want to say I, it hurts people I love. They think that people blame them and think they were bad because of the bad things I've done, but you can't blame people. For I, I chose to do those things. I wasn't raised that way. But I tell you what, I've never tasted anything as good as Jesus Christ. Amen. I've never felt anything that felt as good as the Holy Ghost yes. flowing through your veins, working in your life. Amen. I've never felt anything that made me feel hot as the peace that God puts in our soul, yes. Brother Johnny. Yes. I tell you what, why are we seeking the things that please this place when we can seek the things we can be filled with the Holy Ghost? I tell you what, he'll baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And I tell you what, if we got that fire, it'll get in there. And that bad attitude ain't going to be around very much because it'll burn it out. Yeah. Fire will purify too. Yeah. I tell you what, that's what we need is a purification. Yeah. We need a detox from the world. We need to start putting out the bad things and getting more of the good things in. We need to stop watching less of the things for the pleasure and seeking more things for the Spirit. And I'm preaching to me too. I need it too. I need a closer walk. I tell you what. We all do. I've never been sent to judge sent to judgment Sister Darlene when she said she was struggling with her temper. I tell you what, I wouldn't be struggling with mine today. But I tell you what, maybe if I'd been reading more, maybe I'd fasted more, maybe I wouldn't have had such a thing. If my chief been in church 40 years, she shouldn't be like that. I was in the flesh. Flesh speaking. We need to learn to speak in spirit. Sometimes we need to shut up. Brother Bill told me, said, son, sometimes the best thing to say is to say nothing at all. Yeah. But I tell you what, the flesh don't like that. The flesh right. wants to put our opinion in. Yeah. The flesh wants to tell everybody what they, sometimes we need to be still. We be still, God will work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. God won't work because we can't shut up. He can't get a word in. You need to do this, you need to do this. Sometimes we just need to steal and pray. And God will work. Yeah. Sometimes we get our flesh in it. We want to see things change. <clears throat> Especially with your kids. With your kids, it's hard to shut up. It's hard to hurt. It's hard to raise them to do one thing and then do another. It's hard not to sit back and do something. Sometimes we make things worse. We just need to steal away and we need to pray and trust God. Because there's nothing that hurts worse than to see your kids, to see you sacrifice and suffer and raise them godly, to see you put down a belittle and see them to take up the world and live pleasing to the world. We need God more in these days Amen. than we ever have before. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I let this get me down for a while, and if I was hurt and bad, I'd lay home up <laughs> go ahead, God understand. But I tell you what, I'm not letting this stop me no more, Sister Darlene. If I'm hurt and I'm coming to church, I'm going to hurt in the bed, or I'm going to hurt in church. If it gets so bad, I cry like I do sometimes, I'll just cry in church, Brother Darlene. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll cry on your shoulder, you know. But I'm not going to get my deliverance stay at home. I'm going to get it pressing out. Yeah, Brother Johnny talked about that one with the press that come through the press that had the issue of blood. What is what was the press? It was a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. She pressed through the flesh to get there. Yeah. She won that she pressed through the crowd, the flesh. She got her healing. A lot of times we can't get our healing because our flesh is our daddy. Yeah. Our flesh is running the show. Flesh runs the show sometimes on me. Yeah. You all, you all flesh probably don't ever lead your life sometimes, does it? Does mine. 
But I tell you what, if I wouldn't feed it as much, it wouldn't be as strong, Sister Green. I'm taking the blame. That's not the devil's fault. The devil don't make me do nothing. I choose to do it. Yeah. I get so yeah. sick of people yeah. just find the yeah. say the devil made me do it. No, the devil didn't come down and tie you up and do nothing to you. That's right. You chose to do it. I choose to do it. But I tell you what, God will bless us when we put God first. Mm -hmm. God will bless us and God will speak. We'll say, God ain't spoke to me. So when's the last time we opened his word? Yeah. That's how God speaks to us. When, when's the last time we opened his our word? Say, well, I'm really not getting no answers, brother. When's the last time you fasted? Keep when's praying. the last time you pushed that flesh down and said, listen, I'm the boss. I want something from God. I need an answer. I need this delivered out of my life. Yeah, the brother in church is struggling, God. I'm going to fast. Break those chains that God has bound. Like I said, I went to the refrigerator that time and that jar called pickle called flour, hot cold flour. It looks good. I had slobber coming down. I wanted it so bad when I was fasting. You know, I tell you what, that's when we need to go and get in God's Word and pray and seek God. When we abstain from the world and the things of the world, if we want to get things closer with God, that's when we need to put God back in. We need to pray and we need to fast. We need to replace the world with the things of God. That's how you do it when, when you go with the doctors. They say abstain from food, drink water. That gets all the toxins out of your system. That's how you do it with God. You abstain from the world and you replace it with the word. You replace it with prayer. That's the only way we're going to get anywhere with God. You know, I wouldn't be married if I didn't talk to my wife. That's the key thing that makes her happy is for me to listen. And I, I've noticed she don't like me listening. Looking over here, when she's talking, she wants me to look at her. To show her. Show her that she matters. God matters in our life. And if he matters like we say he does, we'll talk to him more. We'll have more conversations with him. We'll put him first in our life, Sister Reed. Paul said in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, it says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For its will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do, not. For the good that I would, do, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I, now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. Mm -hmm. Means there's something in there that needs to get out. <coughs> needs to get out. And you know, it's easy to let something get in there. Yeah. It's easy. You know, we're all different. Some people are emotional. Usually, ladies are usually easier hurt than men because that's the way God made them. God made them gentle and sensitive. They're the ones that nurture the babies. He made them nurture them. You know, it's easy, Brother Johnny, for something to creep in us. Mm -hmm. Hard feelings, Brother Chris, something to happen. Somebody do something. But we've got to keep those things out. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they are, we've got to keep them out. And God will keep them out. Yeah. But they're washed out by the Word of God and faith in the Word of God. It says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. You think Paul didn't have struggles? I think he was beat. Yeah. I think it's five, five times it says, if, I think it's 39 times it would have been yeah. 195 stripes Paul had took. You think it might, might not have been hard to let something set up inside you? Been beat that many times? Mm -hmm. You know, shipwrecked and bit by, bit by a viper, all the things that Paul went through, been so easy for him to give up. We think we go through things in this world I've never been bitten by a viper and shook it off. I've never received 195 stripes. I've never had to be let down throughout a window and escape from my life. You know, but he said, talking him, you have to be careful here. It says, but I see another. It says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Who did the Bible say 
said, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in this world, yeah. who could they save? Yourself. Yourself. How do you save yourself? By the word of God, by obeying it. God's told us to pray. Mm -hmm. God's told us to fast. He's told us to abstain from, from fleshly lusts. Things that draw us away from God. And there's nothing wrong with having a good time. There's nothing wrong with, you know, but the things that draw us away from God, we need to abstain from because they're poisonous. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you put sugar in your gas tank, you may get here, but you're going to get sluggish. You know, people says, I don't care how I make it to heaven as long as I make it. If I'm the very last one, I don't want to take a chance, Brother John. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just get in by the skin of my teeth. I don't want to get in sluggish. I want to get in good. I want to be, I want to do, I want to do right. I want him to say, enter in my good and faithful servant to the joy of thy Lord. I don't want to take a chance on missing it. No. I don't want to have a sluggish engine. I don't want to have the more days where I'm down because I'm not what I used to be. I don't. I spend more time talking to God now than I ever have in the last two years probably than I ever have in the other 16 because I have to face my problems. Mm -hmm. Before, Brother Johnny, I'd get up and bury myself at work. I bury myself at work so I couldn't think. That's not good. Now I have to face my problems head on. I have to face them, face them with prayer. I can't just shut the world out. I have to face it. You know, somebody said, I'd just like to get away from here and move. I said, you'll have trouble there right. until you face your problems and overcome your fears and your trials. They'll be wherever you're at. Amen. There's a devil in yeah. California. There's a devil in Texas. Yeah. There's a devil in Florida. There's a devil in Maine. Wherever you go, there's evil. you got to learn to overcome it. Amen. I've got to learn to overcome it. But it's going to take prayer and fasting. You know, I know everybody here is part of the church. You know, so maybe this ain't no big part of the message. But we need a closer walk with God. Yeah, Jesus yeah. said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Mm -hmm. I need to lift him up in my life. I question myself that I needed to live a better life to my children. But I need to do that, Brother Johnny, by prayer and fasting. People used to talk about their old mothers hearing them crying out for their soul at night, worried about them. Our kids come to our room while well, they hear nasty TV. Or do they hear us crawl? And I'm not saying everything when they're nasty. Don't go away and say, Brother Jeremy's preaching against this or that. You ever hear foul language and stuff on there? Do they hear us still crying out for their soul? I blame myself. I could have done so much more. And I've got more desire now than I've ever had in my life, but I needed to put it in action. God brought my mom back from the dead. God can do anything. She had turned purple. She had stopped breathing. She went ice cold. And she's up walking around the house cooking and doing laundry now. You can't tell me nothing. There's nothing that God can't do. But I tell you what, when she was dying, I got down to business with God. I got down. I was in the parking lot at St. Mary's. I didn't care if you see me. I didn't care if my shoulders hurt. I had my arms lifted as high as I could get them. And I tell you what, I got a hold of him there that day. Because there was something that mattered. I tell you what, our souls matter. Our walk with God, it matters, Brother Johnny. It matters. But I tell you what, we need to be serious. We need to get serious. We can't be filly paddling around or whatever those words are. We got to be serious with God. You know, I thank God. And I don't know. If, I, I feel like I got old with God. I'm not saying God answered my prayers. The church was praying. Like Brother Johnny said, there ain't nothing to do with me. It's all God. But I tell you what, if we can move, if we can move heaven and earth, if we can move God. When we pour our tears out and we get a hold of God and we get the flesh out of what God will move. God part of the Moses didn't part the Red Sea, Brother Johnny. God did. Mm -hmm. When Moses moved, God moved. Gideon. When God moved, when he moved, God moved. When Samson moved, God moved. He asked the Lord to restore his strength. He took out more Philistines to death than he did alive. Yeah. Because when he moved, 
God moved. I tell you what, we can be lazy and expect God to move. God will move when we move. Yeah. We come to church, we want to see a Holy Ghost filled revival. We've got to move. We've got to move. We've got to seek out. We've got to have prayer. We've got to be praying around the altar, seeking God. Why would God send, send fire to a bunch of wet candles? We've got to want it, Brother Johnny. And God will on, give it brother. when we want it. The Holy Ghost, if you want it, God will give it. But I tell you what, it was like the woman that had lost the pearl or the coin. I really was ashamed to have lost that. And she wanted it back. And she went looking for it. She put everything else aside and she started looking for that coin. I tell you what, if you want the Holy Ghost, put everything else aside and start looking for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's that coin that she wanted. If you want it, you'll find it. Yeah. God promised it. God said he can't lie. Mm -hmm. Talked about the merchant. He wanted something. He sold everything he had, Brother yeah. Johnny, to get that pearl a great price. The Holy Ghost is that pearl a great price. Yeah. But I tell you what, we can't be bought into the world right. and receive the things that are spiritual. <laughs> we got to sell out to the world. Yeah. You know, we watch TV eight hours a day and pray 30 minutes a day. What do you think? We're going to get the Holy Ghost? Something to think about. We need to put God first. When we put God first, God will move. His word is full of promises. Amen. He said to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. And what's that word? Ye? That's you. Everyone shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, this promise, promise, that means God said you could have something. And he says, I promise. Mm -hmm. He says, the day you seek me with your whole heart, I'll be found. That's it. How many times do we fail to seek God with our whole heart? Amen. And Amen. I tell you what, this ain't just for the one that needs the Holy Ghost. It's for all of us. Amen. Because if we're honest, we Amen. all need more of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Come on, brother. I'll raise both hands. Brother Jeremy needs more Come on, brother. of the Holy Ghost. Whose fault is it that they don't have more? Mine. And not your fault. My fault. Nobody can hinder me but myself. Mm -hmm. People can be a stumbling block, but the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. He gets back up. Yeah. Nobody can get in our way but ourselves. Mm -hmm. The devil cannot stop us. He's defeated. God gave us power over him. Amen. But it says to us to walk on yeah. him. Yeah, it's up to not let him climb on us. He's defeated. We've got to walk on him. But we can't walk on him if we're drawing our strength from the world. Mm -hmm. we got to get our strength from the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stop there. Anybody here?